Hi folks, this is John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru. Wow, four videos from me in one day. How can you possibly contain your excitement? Um, and <laughs> anyway, uh, lots of questions. I joined a couple of Facebook groups. And it's like, you know, my subscriberships jumped. Like for me, I'm trending, you know, uh, even though I'm still under a little bit under a thousand subscribers, but it's growing. So I appreciate that. Um, but one person asked me about PD. GM and how that's going to impact um, therapy services from a home care perspective in terms of documentation. And, you know, um, here, here's some just general things to think about. Um, number one, even though uh, the payment model is changing, the patient has not. Even though the payment model is changing, the principles of documenting medical necessity have not. Uh, care is still um, term it as reasonable and necessary. So in your documentation for home health, you still need to show that you have a complexity of patient that requires home services, home therapy, um, partly because they're homebound. That's not changing. Um, the complexity of what you do to prove that what you did was medically necessary, that's not changing. Um, the um, safety of what you do, in other words, you do things because only you can safely do them. Um, your documentation still needs to show that come January 1st. Effectiveness. We're still going to treat patients in an evidence-based way. And in fact, there's going to be a lot more pressure to um, treat patients to a visit number that supposedly correlates with the patient's functional level and their um, their particular diagnosis and their comorbidities. So um, expect to see... Um, a push by your uh, by your uh, rehab managers, by third party payers, etc., uh, by anything that's managing the patient's money to do a certain number of visits, and they're getting that from uh, research on the data that they've taken. But obviously, the big thing that still needs to happen January first is that we're documenting to the individual patient. Um, just because a payer change happens January 1st um, does not mean that the patient changed. The patient will still be the same. If the patient needed um, 10 visits of therapy, um, two week five, I'll just use that as an example, on December 31st, they'll still need that on January 1st, even though we're going to be paid different come January 1st. Because what's going to happen is, um, let's say you were the only discipline in for whatever reason, and you went into that second 30-day window and you only developed, delivered two visits, that second 30-day window, that would be considered a lupa at that point because you're going to be paid epis, you're going to pay, be paid per 30-day period. Still, you have a 60-day certification, but you'll have a 30-day window that they'll look back for payment. So that'll change how you get paid. And some of you are going to get pressured by your operators to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen. But... With that said, who are we concerned about mostly? We're concerned about our our particular scope of practice, our license. We're concerned about the patient. Uh, we're concerned about that um, relationship we have between us, the therapist, the doctor who referred the patient to us, and the patient. And anybody that inserts themselves into that relationship, they're just unwanted. Um, you know, they have... They're going to have a financial incentive to pressure you to do certain things, but but you are the ultimate one to tell them yay or nay, this will or will not happen. Anyway, this has been John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru. Hoping you have a great day. Bye.